Hello and welcome to this YouTube channel for ACCA FR exam prep. My name is Adam. In this video, I'll recap key ratios for the exam. Uh, we're looking at interpretation, the interpretation part of the exam, where we'd have to uh, look at analyzing or interpreting what financial statement. So let's recap these ratios. Now we start with profitability ratios. Profitability ratio. We have gross profit margin. Gross profit margin. It is gross profit over revenue times 100. And remember, the margin is in percentage. So your final answer should be left in percentage. Gross profit margin is gross profit over revenue times 100. And the answer is in percentage. Then we have operating profit margin. The operating profit margin is profit before interest and tax. Profit before interest and tax over revenue times 100%. Again, this answer should be in percentage. Your margin should be in percentage. We have return on capital employed. Return on capital employed. Now, return on capital employed is profit before interest and tax over capital employed. And what is the capital employed? It is debt plus equity. Debt plus equity. And sometimes too we say the capital employed is total asset. So total asset less current liabilities. Total asset less current liabilities. We have return on equity. Return on equity. And the return on equity, the formula is profit after tax and preference dividend. So we are looking at what is the earnings, the earnings attributable to the shareholders. So the return on equity as a profitability measure is the profit after tax and preference dividend divided by the total equity times 100%. And this ratio is also left in percentage. Then we have asset turnover. Asset turnover. Asset turnover is revenue over capital employed. Revenue over capital employed. And sometimes we can measure it as revenue over total assets. Revenue over total asset. Or revenue over net asset. So depending on the particular question, you have to look at the measure. Or you take the default measure as revenue over total assets. Profitability ratio. And remember, it is left in the number of times. It is a number of times that the assets generate revenue. Number of times the assets generate revenue. Now, let's look at category two of our ratios. Here, we are looking at working capital, liquidity, and gearing ratios. So, for working capital and liquidity, we are looking at the asset management management of working capital. So we have a uh, current ratio also as a liquidity ratio. And current ratio is a current assets over current liabilities. It's the number of times that the current assets can pay for the current liabilities. And the answer is left into that ratio of is to one. And remember the ideal uh, situation to have is two is to one. Quick ratio. Quick ratio is current asset less inventory divided by current liabilities. Current assets minus inventories divided by current liabilities. Now we have other activity ratio, inventory turnover. Inventory turnover is cost of sales divided by inventory. Is the number of times inventory is turned into sales. So it is not the revenue itself. So remember, it is the cost of sales. Cost of sales. Inventory turnover. Inventory turnover. Then we have inventory days. And the inventory days is measured as inventory divided by cost of sales times 365 days. So it is the number of days inventory is held before selling. 
So the shorter the days, the more saves in the period. Then we have receivable days. Receivable days is three receivables or account receivable divided by revenue times 365 days. It is the number of days customers take to pay their account. Again, we have for the trade payables, we have the trade payables over purchases. So remember, it is over purchases. If you do not have purchases, then you can use the cost of sales as the measure. And this is the payables divided by purchases times 365 days. It's the number of days the entity is giving credit for. So you always have to analyze the payable days as against the receivable days. Very important. Now, let's look at gearing. Gearing, we talk about solvency, long-term uh, obligations, how the entity settles. So it's about debt to equity, debt to equity. So if you look at the gearing, we can have the measure as one, debt to equity ratio. And debt to equity ratio is interest bearing debt over equity times 100. And here again, the answer is left in percentage. And we say the higher the, the, the rate or the percentage, the higher the risk associated with the entity or the higher the debt. So if you have 50% plus, it means we say the entity is high risk, high risk, so high gearing. Anything below 50 would often be seen to be acceptable. But again, it depends on the industry and it depends on the capital structure of the entity. Another measure of gearing is debt over equity plus debt. So debt over equity plus debt here, we are looking at the total capital of the entity. So the measure again is the interest bearing debt over the interest bearing debt plus equity times 100%. And the other measure of gearing is the interest cover. The number of times that the profit before interest can pay interest expense. The higher, the better. So the interest cover is profit before interest and tax divided by the finance cost of the entity. The interest cost of the entity. Now let's look at the last category of the ratios here. We want to look at investor ratios. Investor ratios. So for the investor ratio, we also refer to them as market ratios. Market ratios. One, we have dividend yield. Dividend yield. So the return on the market price of the shares. So we look at the dividend per share divided by the market price per share times 100%. So the answer is left in percentage. Dividend yield. So we are looking at how much is each share retaining in terms of dividend it's a market measure it's a stock market measure then we have dividend cover dividend cover and dividend cover is the number of times the earnings for the year can pay the declared dividends the number of times the earnings for the year can pay the declared dividend so we say earnings per share divided by dividend per share so the answer is left in the number of times, not percentage. The cover, and the higher, the better. The higher the number, the better. Whether you are comparing to the entity's uh, historical figure or you are comparing to industry averages. Then we have PE ratio, PE ratio. And price earnings ratio is a key market measure. It's a key market measure for the investors. So they want to look at the entity's P ratio in terms of recognizing how profitable the entity is. So a P ratio is measured as the market price per share divided by the earnings per share. Market price per share divided by earnings per share. P ratio. So P for price, E for the earnings. Now, the other ratio is the earnings yield. Earnings yield. Here, we want to look out for each share price. 
what is the percentage of earnings on this share so it is the earnings per share divided by the market price per share and the answer is left in percentage the answer is left in percentage so uh, this is just a quick recap of the ratios which you, you are likely to meet in the exam please remember these ratios in terms of uh, the exam we can have the profitability ratios as performance performance so when you are analyzing the performance of the entity we look at performance ratios as profitability when you are analyzing the position the position of the entity we are looking at the working capital ratio we are looking at the liquidity ratio we are looking at the gearing ratio and if you want to analyze the market position of the entity then you use some of the what the investor ratios or if you still you want to analyze the performance in terms of the market then we can also use some of the what investor ratios i hope this video helps you in preparing for your fr exam please subscribe to this channel to receive updates on new videos